Greetings and welcome to the Hourlings Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a couple of different kinds of front matter and back matter. Most notably, we're going to talk about dedications and acknowledgments. Greetings, everyone. Hi, how are we all doing? Shay is on vacation and she still made the podcast. That love important the, to me. I love the dedication. Yeah, we were having a pile of uh, technical difficulties before the show tonight, but we still managed. That's not important. Our, our listeners are just that important to us. That's right. The wonders of technology. And um, like good technology, we are running on our secondary systems right now. So I Ooh. hope it doesn't go sideways. So anyway, the place we're going to start tonight is uh, dedications. Um Actually, and we dedicate you know, this podcast to you, the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Cool. Yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny. I never really thought about dedications when I wrote my first novel. I, Frankly, I was just making it up as I went along. I, I didn't think about front matter or back matter at all or how to, how to do any of that stuff. And um, when I got around to it finally... Um, you know, the dedication with my, my first dedication was very poignant for me because I, I dedicated my, um, uh, my first, um, uh, science fiction novel to my brother, Eric. And it says, uh, let me just make sure I get the wording right. For my brother, Eric, because you never got to read it. Mm. Yeah. My brother had died before um, before the book was published. And in fact, it, he was one of the major factors on me actually finishing, you know, the whole bucket list thing. So what about you guys? What actually, uh, you know, inspires you for your dedications? How, how, do you, how do you guys pick who to dedicate to? Well, well, I mean, Marty, I would just jump in on this. I mean, obviously I don't have much that I can dedicate yet, but, uh, and I did say, and I was honest, I will probably put, more than one dedication, not more than five, but more than one dedication in my first novel. Now, I, now we I, need to differentiate dedication and acknowledgments. Yeah, so. no, I'm not talking about acknowledgments. Acknowledgments right. will be a longer list, but I mean, no more than five uh, and probably two or three to the dedications. And the dedications, yes, Marty, I have said this, I will make this public. You have been a great help to me. You are definitely getting on the list. But the other person I'm thinking of... That remains to be it. seen, you know. Well, yes. You could, you could hate sucks. me by that. that and that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that I will not. That I will not. Um, but I will. But mom died. My mom died this year, as some of you viewers may have heard. And uh, yes, it would be really nice. Uh, in fact, Marty, thank you, because that inspired me. I, I really would like to dedicate my uh, first novel to her. To say, look, your son wrote this. And he started writing it just after you passed. And, and he wished you could do it. You know, it's you know on that point, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. On, on that point of, uh, you know, hating me by then or that joke you made, you know, dedications are kind of like tattoos. So, you know, when you get a tattoo of someone's name, make sure you really, really mean it. Um, mm -hmm. I have dedicated some early manuscripts that were not yet published that I ended up changing the dedication to. Um, before, you know, before I let it go or, or uh, before I let it see the light of day. So definitely think about it. I mean, you can always dedicate something early on and then change it before you publish it. But once you hit that publish, make sure that that's really the right dedication for the right book. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, like, I also like dedications that are um, understandable to the reader. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't really like dedications that are like, to you know who, because you know why. Well... Actually, I've, I've actually seen a lot of those, right? You know, there are esoteric riddles and stuff like that. Well, and jokes, maybe yeah. that one's not so bad, but it's like um, one, one author has dedicated uh, every book he's ever written uh, to the same uh, person who, who apparently died at a young age and, and has never provided context on, on who that person is. And I, I feel the author's pain, so... But at the same time, I'd like to know more about the story. Um, for, for my first story, I dedicated it 
uh, for my parents. I wish you could have read this. Uh, in my case, uh, my dad would have loved it, um, had, was already dead, and uh, my mother was suffering from dementia uh, and was no longer able to read. It's interesting how I've had multiple books that I've written have been dedicated to people that have passed away. You know, a friend, friends of mine from high school and, uh, you know, the first, the first woman that I ever dated seriously, you know, mm. have, several of them have passed away. My yeah, I think parents, that, makes, that makes sense for a lot of reasons. I mean, number one, it's a way to immortalize them, you know, give them a memorial. Um, number yeah. two, dead people can't hurt you again. Um, they're a pretty safe bet. And uh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. I, yeah, I, I can't continue. object to it. I, uh, I, I have to disagree with David, though, that um, I, I like it when dedications are sort of mysterious. Um, and my, my dedication for This Is Not a Love Scene, uh, which was a traditionally published book, uh, was somewhat mysterious. Um, it just said to werewolf, no one knows who werewolf is. I've never revealed who it is. Um, and I'm okay with that. I like that, you know. Um, yeah. It's, it's, uh, for, it, and I can see your point for sure that it can be frustrating. But on the other hand, um, I've read multiple blog posts about dedications that said, you know, dedications, whether they're mysterious and understandable or direct, they humanize the author um, and, and give a window into a personal life that's not just this storyteller. And, so I like it. And, and I agree with that. But uh, I, I guess my personal preference is if you're going to give me a window, um, I, I want to see a little Windex so I can see in, in just a little bit. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Another story of mine uh, was an action story that had the, uh, one of the features was orcs on motorcycles. My brother uh, races motorcycles. He, he used to race on, on tracks and now he does uh, off-road uh, racing. So I dedicated it to, uh, for Steve Keener, a road with no speed limits and really tough bikers. Right, and that, that was sort of in his face just for fun. That brings yeah. another point up that I would love to raise. Um, that that makes sense. Like that's that's a dedication that has a connection. It's re it's relevant mm -hmm. and it makes sense. And I, I tend to be inspired. Back to Mari's question about like what what motivates you to choose a dedication. I choose dedications that make sense, not necessarily the ones that are like the most deserved or the most like the person who's done the most for me in my life. Um, if that were the case, then I would dedicate, you know, my first book to my parents, right, who have given me everything, life and sustenance and all, all that stuff. Um, but it didn't make sense, my first book. Uh, you know, it was a, a young adult romance. Uh, you know, it, just, it wasn't the right book for them, even though they're the most, you know, influential people in my life right now. So I, I understand when people choose, like, the most important people. But I also understand the logic of just choosing the most relevant people or the one who has the most connection to it. Um, and I have, I have one where I honored some historical people. Um, I have a heist story set in the, the 22nd century. Um, and if, if you recall history, uh, the Monuments men were a bunch of art historians and such in World War II right. uh, who tried to retrieve all of the stolen paintings and artworks uh, that the uh, the, the Russians and the Nazis and, and other folks uh, stole uh, during the war. Well, I have a similar organization called the Monumentalists uh, in, this, in this book, um, trying to retrieve some stolen artwork. And so I dedicated it to, uh, for Ronald Balfour and Walter Hutchinson, two of the Monuments men from World War II who gave their lives in the service of protecting priceless works of art for future generations. I thought that was right on point for the theme of the book. Uh, in, 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 in a strange way, in, in the book, I'm kind of honoring uh, what the monuments did, what, what the monuments men did, um, and continuing it on in the future in, in a more uh, gender equal uh, fashion. My main character is a woman. I like that a lot. Yeah, that definitely goes to my point of being connected. Now I'm going to pick on Jeffrey, if that's okay. <laughs> Jeffrey, I'm going to disagree with you now about having dedications that are to more than one person. Okay. Um, you said you have up to five. Oh, I think that's, yeah, that's way right. too much for a dedication because I think it dilutes the power of dedication when you include many names. And I, I've done it in some of my earlier drafts, but none of my published work. And I probably will revise that before I publish them. Um, 
But I, I think that, yeah, number one, it dilutes it. And number two, I think it shows a lack of confidence that you'll be published again. That, that's an important one. You know, when I, when I, I was going through similar thoughts that maybe you were when I was thinking about adding people to a dedication and thinking like, oh, you know, there's all these people I want to honor. Maybe this will be the only book I ever do. I should probably throw them in there. But then I told myself, no, I'm a writer. I'm going to have many manuscripts. There, there will be a book for the, for one person. There'll be a book for that person if there needs to be. Um, so I had confidence that I would be published multiple times. Well, I mean, that's a fair point. Uh, right now, I'm only suggesting two. And for very good reasons. I don't think I would be writing this novel without Marty's help. And my mom did die just before I started writing the novel. So they are very closely entwined with this novel. And I think they both deserve to be acknowledged. Now, if and by help, he means gratuitous nagging and browbeating. Yes, <laughs> yes. But I appreciate it. Uh, it's a really nice thing that he does for me, my, my friend. Well, Jeffrey, you can pick on me now if you want. Well, Shay, I mean, uh, no, I, I think uh, your, your preference for vagueness, I'm actually with you on that at some level. I'm, the, I'm ambivalent. I'm, I'm with David on this and I'm with you. I love the in-joke. I love the, and thank you for that left turn you took when, you know, we right, were supposed right. to go right. You know, those, those are kind of cool. I, I'm definitely for that. I don't think I'll be vague in mine because I do want to call people out and tell them people, tell the readers why they're important to me. But uh, who knows, my second novel, it could be dedicated to salt because it was such a good form of money in Roman times. I mean, I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to dedicate it to. I'm not going to worry about that. That's right. Um, yeah, another kind of dedication that I've done is uh, in this novel, um, I dedicated it to my parents. And the reason I dedicated to my late parents is that there's two characters in here that are based upon them hmm. and um you know it was kind of fun to do the dedication because my mom definitely would have not liked all the cursing in this book <laughs> <laughs> and I, I in fact call that out in the in the dedication that's funny so i dedicated um I read the dedication let's let's hear it Oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Well, yeah. I can read it says, uh, this book is dedicated to my late parents, Ella Lean Wilsey and Maurice Howard Wilsey. They were the original Ma and Pa. Those are the characters inside the book. Uh, to many that came through their lives. The main difference is, I'm sure Ma would have objected to the cursing. <laughs> okay. That's very funny. Yeah, and, it, and that's another good way to uh, take dedications. And it's um if they're funny or engaging um right. keep, keep in mind the dedications are always in your preview pages on amazon mm -hmm. so yep. even if your book is just for sale everybody's going to get to see the dedication so don't underestimate the value of it yeah. if it's interesting or heartfelt or funny or mm -hmm. ridiculous it could be fun for the reader and it could get them you know a little notch closer to buying your book. Yeah, especially the new jokes. I surprised some people with my dedication for the biography of my brother called mm -hmm. American Boy, which I self-published, and we donate the proceeds to putting other people into uh, addiction and rehab. And so I'm, I'm sure most people assumed that I would dedicate that book to my brother, um, but I didn't. I dedicated it to my mom um, because she's the one that's still here, that is, um, you know, really adopted this project as a passion um, to help other people in his name. So I wrote, uh, dedicated to mom for her American boy. You are the barracuda that moves us forward. I wish I could take your pain away, but I don't know how. I'll just love you more each day until I find a way. So it was kind of poetic. Um, you know, it, it, I deliberated, you know, do I do this to my mom or to my brother? And, you know, I was really torn about it, but I decided on my mom for the reasons I mentioned, but also because, uh, as I was saying to Jeffrey, you know, I have other books that I think I would prefer to dedicate to my brother rather than a book that's really about his pain and the really difficult life that he had to live. Yeah. I, wanted, I wanted him to have a book dedicated to him that was not about that, that was about something you know, that, that embodied his heroism and the way that I saw him. So I have another book in the pipeline that is dedicated to him. Um, that is a, it's like a, a science fiction, you know, it's totally not 
about opioids or anything like that. And so I'm really happy that I made that choice. And my mom just adores the book. I mean, it means the world mm -hmm. to her since she lost her son. So I, I think I made the right call there. Yeah. I, I think you made a good decision too. In, in a way, if you look at it, the whole book is a tribute to your brother. So yeah. dedicating right. it to him as well would be kind of superflu superfluous. Exactly. Right, right. Absolutely, definitely. Uh, so another theme-based one that I did is, uh, Marty may recall an anthology called Fantastic Defenders, that I <laughs> up, uh, for, for which I, I purchased one of his stories. And the, the theme was Fantastic Defenders, basically heroes who defend the, the people they're responsible for against, yep, uh, against major threats. And so I dedicated it uh, for the men and women of the United States Armed Services, Defenders mm -hmm. One and All. That's great. That's right. great. And I, I thought that fit the theme and, and it really represents how I feel about the armed services. Yeah. All right. yeah. That's why I dedicated That's 18 great. years of my life working for the Navy. So have you ever read any dedications that were off-putting for you? I have. I I've, seen, I've seen that dedications that won't be named and I probably have forgotten that they dedicated it to themselves because they're so awesome. <laughs> That's you hilarious. Know, that, I thought about doing that after. Um, that would I, make me not buy your book. No, no, I, I, was, I was going to do it in a funny way. Because um, I had one manuscript that, speaking of earlier when I said I had to change some dedications, one manuscript I had to change the dedication twice. So I was thinking to myself, maybe I'll just dedicate this to myself and put in something like, you know, all you, you know, efforts out yeah. there, you know, whatever, something funny that's like query satire. Like, uh, not, not to conceited. The dedicated to the biggest loser I know, the biggest idiot ever, ever I've met, me. Well, I would just never dedicate something to myself. I don't yeah. think so. Don't do that. I don't really don't want to do that. that. I'd rather call somebody else out and honor them. Than yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm already being honored if you, if you put down the sh shekels to buy my book. Well, I don't have a problem with it if it's a joke. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I can't imagine that, that author that you saw, Marty, was doing it sincerely. No. Or maybe he was. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Well, I certainly didn't buy the book. I, I can't think of any... Or other. remember their name. There's probably been something, but I, I can't offhand think of any dedication I, I read that just totally turned me off or, or something. I, I could imagine something that would, but I'm not sure that I've ever seen it. Well, I've seen dedications that were like an entire page, mm. which I mm. immediately just... Yeah, too much, too much. Just yeah. like, uh, no, I don't give, I don't care about your kindergarten class. Right. Whatever. Right. And, and actually, you have to actually be pissy. To, to, to acknowledge. I think that's a that's not a dedication. That's the acknowledgments, which is a, exactly right, right. that's what they're exactly. for. This but I don't I don't want to right. read a whole chapter that's a dedication. Right. I mean, I, I read I a, a series say, once that had a uh, an author. I can't remember the series or the author, but I remember the dedications. Um, he would dedicate every book in the series to his father, who never read anything, mm. and said, "Here's to dad again. He still hasn't read the book." Um, you know. <laughs> I think, this, I think the last book was something like, um, everybody who's read the book, please step forward. Oh, wait a second. Not you, Dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. And just like kept on dedicating it to him. Nice. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, but I will say, I mean, because here's the thing. You want them to be pissy. You want them to be tight. They have to be like something you could tweet. Think about that. Your dedication, if you can't fit it in a tweet, it's probably too long. I mean, I could see something like, to my parents who never supported me or something like that. <laughs> but, but it's, it's, yeah. I would never share something like that. Exactly. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, and, uh, it's, it's, it's not true. My, my parents, uh, you know, would have supported me just fine with the, with the writing. Um, mm -hmm. I just real, realistically kind of started too late in my career for them to actually be around to, uh, to ever have a chance to read anything. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't like someone, but I thought they were worthy of being... Uh, not you, Marty, but they thought they were wor worthy of, uh, you know, being written up because they did inspire me. I would not say bad things about them. I would. I yeah, would that's a different kind of inspiration. Around. You know, the, you know, yeah. bite me inspiration, you know. Yeah. Hey, take that, loser. But it would still be flowery and you. uplifting for that yeah. person. 
to to he who must not be named. Mm -hmm. You're the villain in this story. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I, I've never done that. Thank you for being that way. I can yes. think of one person I could do something like that to. Mm. So, any uh, any final notes well, on uh, we, dedication we, before we move on to acknowledgement? Acknowledgements, yeah. Uh, just a comment to David's point. If you really don't like someone, I wouldn't even make them a villain. That's too much. Uh, that's too much honor as it is. Some villains are really cool, and some villains yeah. are people's favorite characters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I if I really don't like someone, I will happily murder them in my book, but they're not going to be uh, no. uh, not going to be the the antagonist. Villains are for your, your good friends. They're too well liked. I won't give them the credit of having their their name. That that's too likely to get me into trouble. But no, I I have met a few people in my life that would make most excellent villains. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like. You know, I I'll I'll make a villain out of a friend. You know, somebody Dave. Uh, <laughs> I'll turn them into a villain. You know, just did uh, that to kill me. <laughs> Someone did that to me once. It was funny. <laughs> it was a short okay. story. So now the difference between uh, uh, dedications and acknowledgments um, are more than just where they're placed. One is front matter, and one is back matter. For acknowledgments, I, I like to um, have a much longer list in there, and it actually turns out to be a laundry list of the people that actually helped me um, get a book to publication because I could never do it by myself. Wouldn't happen if it was just me, or it would just mm -hmm. totally suck if it did. So I always get lots of help uh, for all my books. And Thank in the acknowledgments at the end is where – um, it, it will be a laundry list of, uh, folks, um, that have helped me and how they've helped me. And, uh, I acknowledge that you beta read for me. I appreciate that. I acknowledge that you were in a writing group that read some of the chapters. I acknowledge that, uh, you know, maybe you were a cosplayer or a science reader that, uh, encouraged me through, you know, some of your comments, you know, I'll do all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. Every one of my novels, I've thanked hourlings in, in my mm -hmm. acknowledgments because, mm -hmm. I do too. You know, I never published anything before I joined the writers group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, my my latest book that's coming out, my first novel, has probably the longest acknowledgments I've ever done. And I, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's got, uh, uh, as usual, a whole bunch of people help me with this story, including, and it's a list of people that includes uh, uh, some of the people from the Hourlings. And since I didn't know who all helped me from the Hourlings. And I, I go, and many thanks to my writing with the Hourlings. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bunch of, because it's a heist story and artwork has been stolen, I have a whole bunch of uh, actual paintings in my, in my story um, th that are included in, 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 the, in the book. Uh, so I go, thanks are due famed mystery writer Lawrence Block, whose anthology In Sunlight or in Shadow, stories inspired by the paintings of Edward Hopper, provided the thematic inspiration for incorporating actual artwork into this story. Uh, and I also give uh, kudos to the Metropolitan Museum of Art for releasing rights-free digital copies of much of their vast art collection to the public. Now you know where these beautiful art pieces come from. Uh, and I, there's a couple other things. And then finally, I would be remiss if I did, did not mention the influence of the Monuments Men on this story, first with the 2014 film and subsequently the excellent non the film was based on, and I, and I list the authors. Right, I, I like to make sure that people get credit for helping me with this, with any story that I do, because I, I think it's. I feel like there's a village that's helping me for each story. Yeah, I will probably acknowledge uh, in this first book, especially because it does have a Parisian character, uh, or at least a French character. That I will dedicate this to Sugon Trois, the uh, class that I was in when I was an exchange student in, in Paris. And, and uh, maybe dedicated to McGill University or something like that to, to tie it in. The fact that I guess I did live in Montreal or maybe just the city of Montreal. I mean, I like feel that. a little uh, social pressure when it comes to acknowledgements. Um, I don't approach them as a place to be creative. I approach them as a place to be graceful and uh, cover some bases. Uh, so I, I definitely, I'm in the camp that David's in with having a laundry list of, uh, of people who have helped, you know, whether, no matter how 
professional or warm and fuzzy. I mean, there's a spectrum for me that the relationships are. Um, you know, I've had in my, my acknowledgments for the traditionally published book, I had past agents, you know, who we parted ways with um, before I, I was able to find that success. And I think that that's perfectly appropriate uh, in a book to just be professional and acknowledge those people, whether you're still working with them or not, um, you know, to pay those dues because, hey, you made it. And, uh, and it all helped a little bit on the way. So it's important to, to be graceful and mm -hmm. thank them. And it's, it's good not the, the, where the dedication should be the, more or less the last thing you write. Your acknowledgements should span your, your book because maybe someone was helping you at the beginning. If they didn't help you at the end, still acknowledge them. They did help you. And, and that's where the acknowledgements can be expansive and discuss everything that went into helping you create this novel. I have a tradition in my acknowledgements to always end with something that's um, amusing in one way or another, mm. whether it's, uh, you know, mentioning something about my cat or, uh, you know, um, other shenanigans. I, I like to end on a funny note in my acknowledgements. Yeah, do you have an uh, example? What's that? Examples are mandatory. Well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Putting him on the spot. That's well, my job. Talk amongst yourselves while I find out. Well, uh, I would say this, that uh, when Project Chronosphere was the concept of a TV show rather than, uh, than a, the novel I'm working on, I always intended to have something that was very ASPCA. No animals were held, uh, were harmed in the making of this episode, except, uh, right. have an except that would be a joke. Like, uh, you know, but this human bonked their head or, or that human, you know, stubbed his toe or something like that. So my first book, um, uh, the last, the last uh, uh, acknowledgement in here, lastly, thanks go to Chris Schwartz. He gave me the first shove to write this book. He coined the term keeper. He introduced me to good bourbon. He inspired a favorite character, and he gave me the most and best feedback to make this story better. Plus, he always makes my wife smile. Brave he is. <laughs> Okay, I mean, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say, that's, uh, that's the last one. I, um, you know, acknowledge the metric ton of other people that helped me. Um, right. Everybody's you know, I should have read these before, before we chatted. Every author is welcome to structure however they want, but, you know, if you're curious about, like, a way that I, I structure acknowledgments, I usually start with family, then I go immediately to, to professional, such as agents, editors, publishers. Then I'll go to fellow authors that help me. And then finally, I'll go to friends who didn't really, you know, maybe we're not uh, as in the, the writing world, but we're supportive. Um, and then, you know, any other like fun, kind of like Marty was saying, random inspiration. But that, that template kind of works for me, starting with family and then quickly going into professional, I think uh, makes the most sense. Right. Sort of like if you're the top of the acknowledgement, you're the most important. But if you're the bottom, you're still important. It's just not as important as the top. Yeah, here's another funny one. And this one, the last line is, oh, and my cat, Bailey, the best cat in the known universe. I like it. Bailey David, David has been beheaded. I'd be smiling about this, but uh, I <laughs> just disappeared. David has been beheaded. <laughs> um, the Arlings and the Invisible Man. The right guillotine here. of our love. I'm not changing the settings. Zoom just decided to edit me out. Oh, yeah. Oh, you are, you know. <laughs> Red face, man. What are you, that is what are you uh, do? censorship, man. Yeah. <laughs> so if I rub my chin, I stay. I guess I, guess, I don't know. There I guess go. so. You got to look like the villain, man. Uh, yes. Thing. Strategize your evil plans. Um, but no. Another thing I was going to say is that uh, your acknowledgments can also follow a chronological order. It could be your parents just because they gave birth to you, and then go from there. But it could go to like, and then the high school I went to, and then they. And then the college I went to and all that, which I may do, but I haven't decided because I like your idea, Shay, of, of close to me versus distant. Overall, I would say try to keep it under two pages. Yes, two pages. I always, I always try to keep it one page or less. Yeah. One page is ideal. Me, just as a general page, rule. Can, but does that include, usually it starts like on a half page, right? So does that include the half page or? Um, my acknowledgements don't do the half page thing 
Neither does my author bio. Okay. They're usually okay. facing each other. Oh, okay. That's just the formatting. Gotcha. Gotcha. The, the one I read is is basically most of the page. Mm -hmm. I didn't start it. At, uh, I didn't start the page at the halfway mark. Yep. So, any other final notes on acknowledgments? I'm not going to worry about I will, my, my final note is that people actually do read them. Yes. Um, I, I actually love to read them uh, in, in Barnes and Noble, you know, when I'm picking out a book, look for your agent. Um, so, just be aware that what you write is not like a little private thank you note that um, I, I, I do believe it will be read. Well, the, so, keep that in mind. The one I read, if, if you really look at it, um, I've acknowledged, uh, you know, the people who helped me with the story. Um, I got the idea from Lawrence Block and an anthology that he had uh, produced that had that included paintings. Uh, so it's a shout out uh, to maybe take a, for somebody to take a look at his book. Um, and I acknowledge the museum of uh, the Metropolitan Museum for making art free uh, for for download. So again, that might be something that somebody checks out. And I, I referenced the Monuments Men, which again is a, is a movie and a book that somebody might want to check out. So I'd, I'd like to think that I left them with some kind of nice references if they want to, if they're interested and they want to see more of those things. I don't do that with every dedication, but it worked for this one. And I will say, you know, your, your, your dedication, if you cannot sell that to Ben White as a nanoism, you probably wrote it wrong. No, this was an acknowledgement, not a dedication. No, I understand. But I'm just about to summarize the whole thing. Yeah, some some show we're gonna have to go through uh, the entire list, like a check checklist of uh, front matter and back matter. That's a mm -hmm. that's actually a good topic because this is just two of the things. And I think that at least I'd like to hope we uh, have illustrated how kind of important they are, really. For uh, for authors to um, spend some time on them, don't don't do them offhand. Well, we would like to acknowledge all of you for listening, mm -hmm. um, and as a catch-all, and when we forgot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you to you. <laughs> Especially you, Bob. Thanks for watching, man. To everyone we forgot. It. <laughs> it catches it all. The money's in the mail. That's right. So, um, anything else? All right, that's your show. Thanks again, and uh, we will see you guys next week.